We're now in a position to look again at the curve sketching, the quadratic function, because we've got the complete method for completing the square when the coefficient of x squared is no longer 1. And the method is very similar to what we've done already with a, a coefficient of x squared 1, but the numbers just get a little bit more awkward and some people get panic a little bit when they get unusual answers in a question and spend more time worrying about whether they've got it right or not uh, than, than perhaps they ought to. So this one's, th these examples here are, are deliberately aimed at showing you that you will not always be given a question that produces some nice numbers, okay? So please don't expect that. Um, in fact, in a way, a lot of the uh, questions in, in, in A-level nowadays are deliberately producing numbers that are a, a, a bit awkward just to make you feel that you perhaps you haven't got the right answer. So let's take our first example, the 2x squared minus 3x minus 7. So we use the general method then for completing the square, which you should by now be uh, much more comfortable with. So we will take out the 2. In other words, we will divide by 2. And then remember the method then tells me to halve the number of x's. So if I halve 3 over 2, I get 3 over 4. It then tells me to square 3 over 4 and take it away. So that's 9 over 16 and the 7 over 2 there. Now, you need to be, again, confident with the fractions. What are you thinking of here? Well, we need a common denominator of 16. So we need 9 over 16, and we need to multiply top and bottom by 8. So that's 56 over 16. 56 and 9 is 65 over 16. Remember, you probably haven't got a calculator uh, in this exam. So when I multiply the 2 out, I have 2x minus 3 quarters squared. I'm going to multiply that by 2, which makes the bottom line 8. So that's completed the square. Now I'm going to use that to draw a proper sketch. Now remember that a sketch mustn't just show the shape, it will have to show key points on the graph. So let's look at some, first of all, very obvious one. If x is 0, y is negative 7. So we know that there's going to be a crossing point there on the y-axis. The symmetry of the graph is from this bracket here. So if x is 3 quarters, we have the line of symmetry. Mark that on there. If x equals 3 quarters, the whole of this is 0, and we have the lowest point of minus 65 over 8, which is just a little bit more than 8. So we end up with the lowest point as 3 quarters minus 65 over 8. So that gives us a pretty good idea now, doesn't it, of what this graph looks like. So it goes up here and it goes up there. And the question may well say, find the points of intersection with the x-axis. So that's when y is 0. So we put this equal to 0. So 2x minus 3 quarters squared must equal 65 over 8. Divide by 2, which is 65 over 16. Then take the square root of each side. So x take 3 quarters 
and remember the plus or minus. Well, 65 hasn't got a square root, it's just going to be a third, square root of 65. 16, of course, has got a square root. So, add the three quarters to the other side and I end up with the two solutions of three plus or minus, and they're both over four, so let's put the four there. So that this will be the biggest value, which is three plus root 65 over four, and this one will be the smallest value, which is three minus root 65 over four. So there we've got our complete sketch. It's got all of the detail on it that we might be asked. We've got the intersection with the x-axis, intersection with the y-axis, symmetry, and the lowest point. And it's all come from our completing the square. So this is uh, very, very powerful. OK, let's move on to the second example then. So I've cleaned the board here from the, the first one. And again, our coefficient of x squared is uh, no longer 1, and it's a negative number. So I'm going to divide by negative 3. And if I divide by negative 3, I get x squared. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is plus 2. 1 divided by negative 3 is negative a third. Carry on with the usual method, halve the number of x's, square that number and take it away again, and pop back in the number that we've already got there. A little bit easier to simplify this one because that's one and a third, isn't it, which is uh, four over three. And then put the negative three back. Negative three times negative four thirds is plus four. And if you remember in the previous lesson, I, I suggested that when this is negative, we tend to write this the other way round at the end and put the, the x part second. OK, so there we've completed the square. So that's the same function written in a different way. Now let's try and sketch uh, this one. So what are the key points here? Well, if x is uh, 0, then y is 1. So that's a very easy point to find. Look at this bracket here. If x is negative 1, we get the line of symmetry. So that's negative 1. Now this time, because the coefficient of, is, uh, of x squared is negative, we know that the graph is going to be the other way around. It's going to be a parabola up this way. And if x is negative 1, all of that disappears, and we have the highest point when y is 4. So the highest point is going to be negative 1, 4. And so the graph is something like that. Nearly like a parabola, but that's, that's not too bad. And now we want to find uh, these points a bit short there. Let's extend it a bit. So how would we find those points? Well, that's when y is 0. So let's go to this. So 4 will have to equal 3 times x plus 1 squared. Divide by 3. x plus 1 squared is 4 over 3. Now this time square root uh, each side. 4 is OK, isn't it? That's 2. But on the bottom we haven't got uh, a decent square root at all. 
We need really to do something about that. That's, you know, it's bad practice to leave surds on the bottom line. So let's just have a look at this, two over root three. Now, if you think back to the work we've done on surds, how would we get rid of that uh, root three? Well, we would multiply top and bottom line by root three, and we would get two root three over three. So the final answer then, putting the one onto the other side, down here this becomes minus one, so x equals minus one plus or minus two root three over three. I'm a little nervous about that as an answer because this is a whole number, this has got a fraction in it. I would prefer you to write the 1 as 3 over 3, and then I can write this as a single line. Um, I think that looks better. So I would rather we write this as negative 3 plus or minus 2 root 3 all over 3, because I think that that makes it easier to indicate this point here will be negative 3 plus 2 root 3 over 3, and this point here will be negative 3 minus 2 root 3 over 3. Make that a bit clearer if I can. Okay. So my answers are not nice, you might want to say, but then they're just as good a number as anything else. In fact, it's absurd. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. But again, see how the completing the square method takes us through and uh, does the work for you. Okay. So best of luck with these then. They need a, a, a little bit of practice, but uh, you should be able to cope with those all right. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant. Spot on. Well done.